victory. They win by 20. Booker, 30. Chris Paul, wow. 28. Very impressive victory for the Phoenix Suns, who continue their winning ways. They won 11 straight against these Dallas Mavs. After the game, head coach Monty Williams at the podium. Coach, there's a lot of areas I could go with this. You could start with the fouls. You could start with the threes. But that fourth quarter, um, just considering how the guys finished game one, how impressed were you that they were able to, to dial it up another level in that yeah. fourth quarter game too? I mean, obviously, you know, you, you have to be not just impressed but proud of the way that we continue to um, win games um, mentally. You know, I thought – the shots that they hit in the first half, that can deflate you when you're playing that hard and a guy or guys continue to hit shots. Um, to only be down two points um, said a lot about, one, our, our defense and our ability to just hold the line. But then um, <clears throat> in the fourth quarter, totally different than the other night. But I thought it started early in the third. Book came out and hit two big threes. Um, there was a point in the third where we had like six consecutive ISO stops, and that gave us a lot of energy. You know, we kind of drew the line in the sand as far as guarding one on one. And then we just had a number of contributions. Uh, Ish came in, Busy came in, and gave us great energy. Um, and Chris, you know, the way he just continues to pick that spot when it's time to take over is really impressive. But just mentally, I thought we stayed with it, but I thought we got a lot of confidence from our defense in the second half. I think when we took the, the starters out at the end, I think they had like 35 points um, in the second half. That's, that's really hard to do against a team that can shoot it and execute the way that they do. Um, but just to follow up on the foul, though, there's so many offensive fouls. How, how were guys able to, to mentally yeah. get through that? Because, I mean, it seemed like there was three within like 35 seconds. Yeah, I mean, it can take your rhythm when you're trying to play offense and you commit that many offensive fouls or a charge or, you know, somebody's just in your way and you run them over because instead of playing, you're looking to see where that guy is and you're, you're out there thinking as opposed to playing instinctually. Um, I thought we did a decent job in the second half of still playing physical basketball but just understanding what they were trying to do. They, they started the game pressuring us, and, and that can make you reactionary. You know, when you get hit, you want to hit back. And I thought some of our offensive fouls were based on that, but you know, our guys deserve credit for how they adjusted to that whistle. Um, we didn't let it affect us, and uh, we did also didn't let their shot making affect us in the first half. Last thing I had was back to the fourth quarter. You guys have did that before in the fourth, where mm -hmm. you know. I don't want to say turn it on, but go to another place. Yeah. Um, you've talked about how during timeouts you can see guys mentally where they're at. Going to that fourth, were you seeing something that maybe made you think, okay, we could have that kind of quarter? Most of our conversations were about the defense. You know, I, I thought our schemes can be relatively sound. Um, we, we try, but I thought there was just a lot of multiple effort, uh, will, and then guys just staying in front of the ball. You know, we in the first half, it just seemed like they were playing deep into our paint off of ISO situations in the second half. I thought we did a much better job of staying in front of the ball, and that was the conversation. You know, we got to get consecutive stops. Um, we had one possession where we got to stop, but I think, it, you know, two of our guys leaked out. They got the 50-50 ball, and Bullock got a three. After that, it was like we need to tighten the screws a bit because we're expending so much energy on defense, then to give them another possession, you know, it just seems like for what, you know? So I thought the conversations were about that. Like, how can we continue to tighten the screws on defense? Monty, in the second half especially, you guys put Doncic in a lot of actions. How important was it for you to test him on that end, given how much he exudes himself offensively? Well, he's testing us. I mean, he's, you know, he's trying to orchestrate on the offensive end as well. So we're, we're just trying to win the game. You know, we, we feel like um, we have guys that can, you know, put them in certain positions, but within what we do. Um, we don't want to just pull a guy into a, a pick and roll just to go ISO with 18 seconds on the clock. 
you know, we want to make teams work. And over the course of the game, we feel like that serves us well. Um, we're just trying to win. If we can strategically put guys in a set so that we can be efficient, we'll, we'll do it. On the other end of that, in the second half, Mikel was fighting through screens a lot yeah. more to stick with Doncic. How did yeah. you like him stepping up to that? I, I liked challenge? it. There was one where he reached and, and got a foul, but I didn't mind that. I think if you can be smart about your fouls in the first half, you can be a bit more aggressive in the second. But I thought the defense behind him allowed for him to to do that. Um, but he's you know he's long. He's got a knack for getting his hands on the ball. Um, and then we you know we trapped a couple times, and I thought that may have thrown off uh, their offensive rhythm a little bit. Um, but most of it was just great effort by our guys and, and, and just putting out the fire when we needed to on the defensive end. You mentioned Busy's energy coming in there. How important was that, that energy with JaVale McGee and DA both dealing with foul trouble? Yeah, I mean, the defensive side of the ball is where Busy tends to give us a lot of juice. Um, but the offensive side tonight was was pretty evident, you know, his presence in the paint. And when Busy's under the basket with a smaller guy, it's hard to rotate, you know, so we could attack the basket. I thought we had a lot more paint touches and rim opportunities because Biz was occupying a smaller guy under the basket. But it it starts with his level of intensity. I mean, that that's how he is every single day. Jay Crowder is the guy that kind of his first half feels like flew under the radar a little bit, but yeah. he was shooting the ball well, yeah. and he's been playing well this series. How important is that for a guy like him who, you know, shots weren't falling in the first round to just stick with it yeah. and be able to contribute? It just way. speaks to his, his uh, mental toughness and the ability to continue to work um, even when you're not making shots. But it also speaks to... You know, Jay can play a game and not shoot it well, but still have a huge contribution. And uh, he does that defensively and offensively. I think he's done a really good job of attacking the paint uh, in point five. And then you couple that with, you know, his ability to knock down shots. Um, but defensively, he's, you know, he's just one of those guys that not only can guard the ball, but he can quarterback on the weak side. So it's good to see him knocking down shots, you know with all the other stuff he does. Hey, Monty, uh, you all set a franchise record tonight shooting 64% in a postseason game. Mm. Um, I, you know, this team has done that not that good, but, you know, has consistently been efficient offensively. Why Why do you think it's continuing to, to happen? Why is this offense so efficient? I mean, we have good players. You know, I'd, I'd love to sit here and tell you I move the chess pieces around. <laughs> Um, we have good players who can knock down shots, but I, I, we try our best to put them in the right spacing and, and try to orchestrate it to a degree. But when you have Chris and Book out there with the ball and the rollers we have and, and guys like Cam and, and Mikhail and, and Jay who can attack in point five, I think it it helps. But we have good players, that, and they're, they're unselfish. You know, they've... They've been together now with Chris for a couple of years, so I think that helps. Um, and then, you know, I think tonight we probably shot a higher percentage because in the second half we got so many stops and we were able to play in transition. Monty, it was another fourth quarter flourish for Chris. Yep. And when he, like, when the quarter changed just from the third to the fourth, is it kind of just understood from everyone involved that, that that's something that he could be capable of? and? and you kind of let him do his thing, or like what what goes into those moments? Now he's, I think it's four times this post, and he's scored four, uh, ten or more in the fourth. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I think um, when he comes back to start the fourth, um, for whatever reason, he's fresh, and um, you know sometimes I play him too much in the first and the third, and I, I get a bit concerned if I should start him in the fourth. But I'd love to sit here and tell you. I knew why or how he does it. Um, I just think, I don't know if our guys expect it, but I know they're grateful for it. And you can kind of see it when he starts going. Um, everybody else just follows suit. But I, I think the stuff around him allows for him to, to do it. When, when DA and Biz and JaVale are diving and we're spaced properly, um, it certainly helps him get to his spots. But he, he's just a, a fantastic basketball player. and. Um, the thing I love about Chris is he just cares. 
you know, you'll see him in the game just coming over, talking to me about things he sees. I'll tell him what I see, and then he just goes out there and does his thing. Coach, says clearly this being a series, it's been established that the back and forth, that chippy or however you want to phrase it, how important is mental going to be moving forward yep. in this series that, okay, you go to Dallas, is this probably going to continue? Yeah, I mean, I, I think our, our guys understand the importance of getting back to focusing on winning the game. You know, we'll have moments like that. You're talking about highly competitive athletes that are playing for something on both sides. But the one thing that we try to do in the huddle is get back to winning the game. And um, it's physical. It can be chippy at times, but I mean, it's just that time of the year. Um, the officials will do what they have to do. We as coaches try to, you know, keep our focus on, on the prize, but it's just a competitive game. Uh, Monty, two things. Number one, back to the big guys. I mean, it's a testimony to the way the team is constructed, isn't it? That when you have two big guys with four fouls, now you have another one you can bring bring off the bench to relieve the pressure for you. It, it certainly helps. Um, and when we got Biz, I forget what month we got him in. Um, I think around Christmas time, um, we had a talk about just that. You know, he was going to have an effect on our team because he had the mental stamina and, and, and toughness to not play a few games and still be ready when he was called upon. Um, and our guys love playing with Biz. I mean, he's he's a great screen setter and he dives and he finishes, but defensively, every time he steps on the floor, he gives us energy. And he also is a quality guy, too. I mean, that, that really fits into your team. Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, his background and what he's doing around the world speaks for itself. And so, you love to see your guys succeed, but it's pretty cool to see the things he's doing off the floor. And then secondly, it, back to the fourth quarter, it was 89-86 with about 11 and a half to go in the game. And then suddenly you just blew mm -hmm. the, the roof off the building. Yeah. And I know you talked about stoppages and all that stuff, but there was a momentum there that seemed to catch fire yeah. in the building itself. Yeah. The building caught fire. Well, I think our, our team is, is we're built to bring energy from our defense or gain energy from our defense. And I thought the ability to guard the ball and force tough shots and rebound and get out in transition got our, our fans um, juiced even more. Um, it certainly allows for this place to be a special place for us and a hard place for other teams to play. Uh, Monty, Doncic finished with 35 points yeah. tonight, but a little bit uh, less output in the second half. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned kind of staying in front of guys. What do you feel like you guys have done successfully against him? And, and what has he done successfully against you guys to have those back-to-back -back big scoring nights? I mean, he's made tough shots. I mean, you look at the threes he made, um, those were over contested hands. Those weren't like somebody else making the play. He's pulling out of the corner and he's got a catch shot wide open. He's, he's making tough shots. Um, I think our our guys deserve credit for just staying with it and not getting or becoming deflated because he was making those tough shots. And then in the second half, um, maybe he missed. Maybe we stayed in his way a little bit better, but our guys won't quit. We understand and respect who he is as an offensive player. Um, I'm just proud of our guys for, for hanging in there. Thank you. Hey, Coach. You know who that man is right there? The Luke.